Um, so as, as people are coming into this Zoom room um, from, from the, perhaps from the previous session, um, those of you uh, who are coming in uh, who haven't attended our previous open house, uh, let me give you a warm welcome. I'm Sheila Kennedy, I'm director of the SMARCS programs and I'm uh, very excited to um, talk with you and with my colleagues um, about our different uh, programs and we're fortunate um, to have um, a number of program directors and people who are familiar with the different SMARCS programs who will be able to answer your questions and tell you one or two things sort of at a high level that distinguishes um, our, our SMARCS programs. Um, let me just kick things off by, by uh, reintroducing myself. Um, I'm a professor of architecture and a founder of the practice KVA Maddox. Um, at MIT, my, my design work and, and my teaching and research really kind of focus on decarbonizing building materials and um, trying to kind of transform and shift the material culture, culture of, um, of architecture and the built environment. Um, I also direct the SMARCS um, architecture and design program, so I'm happy to answer any questions about that. And I'd like to introduce um, my colleagues uh, who are directors of the SMARCS programs. But before I do, I'd like to thank Kathleen and Jose, Jose Luis for their help in organizing this session and with the SMARCS programs. Um, so uh, we have uh, Christelle um, Semtak here. We have Skylar Tibbetts who's standing in for Larry Sass. Um, we have Christopher Reinhardt um, and we will be joined uh, shortly, I think by Nasser Rabat and also by Rafi Sigal. I am so, here. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> Excellent. So starting with Crystal, yeah. um, I will ask you just to say um, a few words about yourself and your program. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Crystal Smentek. I'm an art historian and I am the director of the HTC program, which includes a, our SMARTS program. And HTC is the history, theory, and criticism of architecture uh, and art. And I would also include design. Um, Let's see where to begin. <laughs> um, so basically, I would I would characterize the HTC SMARCS as the sort of interdisciplinary humanities approach to art, architecture, and design. So within the programs, I guess that would be what distinguishes us. We think about, and you would think about as SMARCS students, right? The political, um, historical, theoretical context, economic contexts for um, art, architecture, and design. And we would think, you know, historically about um, blind spots in the kinds of canons we've inherited uh, and how the longer histories of um, building, artistic production, design inform the present days in, in, the, in ways that are both obvious but in ways that are also perhaps, if you will, a little bit insidious, right? That sort of close down certain kinds of questions, but open up um, others. And I'm happy to discuss further when we, um, when we all collectively talk. Nice to see you all. Uh, Christophe, you're next yep. on my screen and then Skylar. Sounds good. Thanks, Sheila. Hi, my name is Christoph Reinhardt. I'm the director of the Building Technology Program at MIT. I also direct a lab that's called the Sustainable Design Lab. My research focuses on energy efficiency and occupant comfort in buildings, especially daylighting, both at the individual building level and we are also modeling cities. Uh, within the Building Technology Program, we have six active faculty uh, engaged in research. The SMARCS BT program is one of three uh, graduate programs that we have. We also have the SMBT, and there's often some confusion whether to apply for SMBT or SMARCS. Uh, we'll generally say if you have a design degree, apply to the SMARCS program, otherwise to the SMBT, and we have the PhD program. Uh, we also have a two-hour uh, open house um, in two days, and I just posted in the chat if you're interested in our program the link. Uh, so there you can find out a lot more. And if you have any questions now, I'm happy to answer them, of course, as well. Thanks. Great. Skylar? Sure. I'm uh, Skylar Tibbetts. I'm faculty in the Department of Architecture, and I'm between computation and architecture and design. I, I sit in both. And I'm standing in for Larry Sass, who's uh, the director of the computation group. Uh, I originally came to MIT as a SMARCS computation student, so I, I know quite a bit about the program. Uh, and then became faculty. I direct the self-assembly lab, which is the photo you see behind me. Um, our research is really about how materials come together on their own and how we can program materials to change shape or change property 
Uh, we develop a bunch of different fabrication processes, et cetera. And in the computation group, you'll see lots of different research um, and lots of collaborations across different disciplines. Our students often take classes in many uh, programs, departments, schools across campus from the media lab and computer science to material science, biology, mechanical engineering, AI. Um, and so there's you know research in lots of different sectors. Uh, I guess this, to kind of sum it up, I think the computation group is really interested in new computational tools or new ways that computation can change our role as a designer or collaborate with different mediums uh, or computation becomes a way to collaborate with different disciplines. And so there's a number of different faculty. Uh, we have obviously a SMARCS program and we have a PhD program in computation. Uh, happy to answer any questions after this about the program. Nasser? Oh, you're muted, Nasser. A second. I'm going to share my screen, though, because I have some images that I want to show. OK, um, does everyone see my screen? Yes. OK, so hi, everyone. My name is Nasser Rabat, and I am a, the director of the Ayakhan program for Islamic architecture, the smallest unit in the department and in the SMRKS. We are actually the little sister of the um, HTC program. So I consider the HTC program to be our strategic extension. And therefore, even though I am now the only Ayakhan professor at MIT, we have um, lost the second Ayakhan professor who retired a couple of months ago. Um, I consider the six uh, colleagues that we have in the HTC to be um, honorary members of the Ayakhan program. Um, and actually our PhD students are part of the HTC group. So in a sense, we are very much enmeshed with them. The Ayakhan program for Islamic architecture as its name implies does what uh, in uh, Europe in the early 19th century, they discovered Egypt as actually the source of the Greek civilization. And you could see in this painting that is painted on the ceiling of the Louvre Museum, um, actually it's a fresco, you will see in this painting what the Aga Khan program at MIT has been striving for the last 40 years to do. Basically to get the culture of architecture in the West to discover Islamic architecture. Um, if you replace Athens here standing with uh, the uh, discipline of architecture and if you uh, replace Egypt with Islamic architecture, you'd realize what I'm talking about. The reason why I'm talking about that is this. This is basically the dominant um, thinking about architecture in the West until about 1960. So it's actually quite recent. This drawing that you see in here has been the frontispiece of one of the most famous books of history of architecture, Bannister Fletcher, A History of Architecture. And you see a tree that grows all the way to be in the modern style with the American, of course, at the heart of it in here and all these branches that are sort of like feeding that development in the modern period. Whereas we have all the other cultures, as you can see them in here, all of them are dead branches. And this one is the Saracenic, a favorite name for Islamic before the 1960. Um, basically it just goes on its own way and it doesn't develop anywhere. So the presence of an Agacan program at MIT is both a challenge and a hope for basically an incorporation of the study of Islamic architecture in the education of the architect. And when I say that, I say um, in the education of the architect from an interest in the vernacular to an interest of the hyper contemporary and modern and <clears throat> underlying all of that is the human factor. You see here the human factor in um, uh, putting a new layer of um, insulation on a house in Sana'a in Yemen, whereas in here we have South Asian workers cleaning the facade of a high rise in Dubai, and in between them is the interest of the Aga Khan program. Um, um, I hope to see many of you when this lockdown is lifted, and in the meantime, uh, good luck, and uh, I am of course open for any question. Thank you. Thank you, Nasser. Thank you very much. Um, we will uh, get to questions. I've opened the chat up. And uh, if you, for example, there are a couple questions about the PhD program. Um, Christelle, maybe you can respond to those and we can kind of divvy our time up between, between speaking and, and responding to the chat. 
Um, Raf Segal is the uh, directs the uh, program in uh, urbanism, SMARC's program in urbanism. Um, he is uh, actually held up right now, so I'm not sure whether he's going to be able to make this meeting. Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm ah, here. Oh, fantastic. I was about you, you yeah. stole my thunder. Yeah. Yes. OK. I was just introducing you. Yeah, I don't Rafi. know where I. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. If you would like, what we're doing is uh, going around the table and just saying really like two or three high level things that that for you are kind of distinctive features about our, our urbanism program. It's a bit choppy. Can you hear us, Rafi? Yeah. Can you oh, hear perfect. me? Perfect. Yes. You're all the, froze. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you, yeah, you're frozen, but we can hear you. Um, if you just wanted to um, talk a bit about some of the key features of, of um, smart yeah, curve. absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Sheila. Um, yeah, I'll introduce myself briefly. I'm Rafi Siegel. I'm an architect, and I direct the Smarts Urbanism Program. Where, uh, right? See, all froze again. Can you still hear me? Yes, Rafi. We okay, can. super. Okay. Uh, the Smarts Urbanism uh, looks at a contemporary urban problems. The program is structured in a way to encourage on a higher level design and research on the urban scale. So we are emphasizing design and research both as a kind of practice. Uh, and it's, it, it casts a wide net uh, and uses a lot of the resources at MIT to basically address the social, environmental, and technological aspects of, of contemporary urban problems whether it's equity and housing, like we're dealing with uh, this year's studio or sea level rise or climate change or other issues in the US and across the world. We usually work with a set of problems that are, uh, are real and are in relation to potential real clients, you can say, or, or real organizations. Um, the program has between eight and 10 students uh, every year. And the second year emphasizes uh, individual research in the form of a thesis. Uh, my, my own interest uh, and lab that I run at MIT uh, is called Future Urban Collectives and looked at, looks at forms of collectivity um, and how different organizations or groupings can generate a new kind of architecture urban project. And I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Rafi. Um, I'm just going to say a couple of things generally, very, very briefly about the programs as a whole in an effort perhaps to respond globally to some of the questions that might come up. And then if you um, in the room here are interested in applying and have a question, um, may we ask you to direct your question to the particular SMARCS program that you're interested in so that we can better um, uh, respond to your questions. Um, but very generally, um, I'd like to kind of go through um, and emphasize several kind of key features um, of the SMARTS programs all together that are unique to MIT. Um, uh, SMART students do need to hold an accredited uh, professional or academic degree in their subject areas before coming into the SMARTS program and come typically for a two years uh, very intensive um, uh, course of exploration of a research matter that, that concerns and engages them. Um, this is a research-based set of programs. It's really an independent course of study. Um, SMARC's urbanism students are required to take two urban design studios, but studio courses are not required um, in the other SMARCS programs, including architecture and design. And this means that it is particularly appealing for those students who've already had a lot of experience in uh, design studios. And so now they are looking for the kind of freedom to, to articulate and pursue their own, their own course of studies. I would say that the SMARCS programs are incredibly diverse um, not only in terms of the students' interests um, and the kinds of practices that they take on when they graduate, but they're also geographically, um, uh, ethnically, racially diverse um, and represent dozens of countries around the world. And this diversity is something that the SMARCS program um, deliberately cultivates at MIT because we really need um, the best minds, um, the most diverse minds um, in research to kind of 
tackle the biggest questions and, and challenges that, that we have. And um, the, the kind of last defining feature, I would say, is the opportunity for interdisciplinary dialogue and conversation across a two-year period. So you do delve deeply um, into your peers in a particular SMARCS uh, program area of study, but there's the opportunity to construct a kind of um, a broad conversation amongst your peers who are uh, studying in very different areas, taking on very different areas of research. So there's a lot of, of cross-disciplinary work um, and collaboration, and I think that's really um, a super interesting feature about the SMARCS programs at MIT. Um, let me look into the uh, chat box here. Um, uh, I'm seeing some questions here. Uh, and um, let's see, uh, Jose Luis and, and uh, Kathleen, if you see some as well, or anyone else, my colleagues, please feel free to jump in. Um, but is a BARC a sufficient professional degree for admission? Yes, um, for the architecture and design program and also for the uh, SMARCS urbanism program it is. Um, we have many who have had that degree. Um, Same uh, with computation. Yes. Yep. Um, is it possible, there's some questions about DUSP courses, uh, Rafi, maybe you- Yeah, yeah. yeah it, 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 it is and it, it's in a way, makes makes a lot of sense uh, depending on your research interest. In some cases, we offer a, an urban design certificate that requires uh, overlap between DUSP, which is um, urban studies. The School of Architecture to explain is made out of School of Architecture and Planning and Architecture Department and Planning Department. When we say DUSP, as you, you might know, it refers to uh, urban studies, the urban studies and planning program, so yes. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a very, uh, we have a good question here uh, before it goes up to the top uh, from uh, Hara. Um, is it acceptable to apply both um, to the SMARCS design and, and computation and the architecture design program? One certainly can, um, but you would need to um, construct different applications, um, different, different um, essays, I would imagine, really for both. So you can apply to as many SMARCS programs as you wish. Um, but the application really asks in its essence for you to make a case for what area of research you're going to be studying and why that's important to you. And also how much experience or not you've had that would prepare you to undertake that course of research. Um, so uh, please think about that when you're, when you're applying to a specific program. That being said, there's a lot of fantastic synergy that happens between computation, architecture, and design, and I would also say urbanism, uh, and really, really all the SMARCs. Um, and so there have been um, students, there's a student right now who is in the architecture and design uh, program, uh, but I'm quite sure that her thesis, uh, when she arrives at it, will be closely uh, integrated with computation. She's taking lots of computation courses. And Skylar is a perfect example of uh, someone who was a, you know, an art trained as an architect, um, went into computation smarks, and now is a professor um, and, and a leader in architecture. So there's a lot of cross pollination. Uh, Sheila, there was a question about the differences, and you know, I'm sure there's different perspectives on that on the smarks AD and uh, smarks computation. I can give one quick response on that. You know. AD, SMARCS AD is really about research in architecture and design, and sometimes that has to do with computation, but sometimes it doesn't, and really it's trying to explore the boundaries and extents and, and new possible research directions in architecture and design, whereas computation, uh, you know, mostly is focused on how computation influences um, design, and so there's lots of different forms of computation, whether that's software or robotics or AI or biological computing or you know many other forms but it's specifically focused on the methods and, and means that we can use computation uh, as a as a tool or an opportunity in research and so you know sometimes they're linked but they also can be quite different yes so, so there's a question about financial aid opportunities i know that nicholas uh, did address that a bit um long story short um, we are working quite hard to try to um, make MIT, because of its small size and the small size of our SMARCS programs, tuition-free. 
but we're not there yet. But it's a it's a huge objective that we have, and we're closing in on it. Um, so um, we're we're aware of um, the importance of this question, and we treat international and um, domestic students in the same way, and really try to give them substantial support, um, really to. Uh, all, all students. That level has been increasing over the last couple of years, and there are some uh, sectors of the SMARCS program um, that are fully funded. Nasser, there's a question about the uh, ACPIA program. What opportunities are there for students to engage in multidisciplinary work with HTC um, ACPIA uh, within the department and outside of the Department of Architecture? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> I think actually there isn't a better program for that engagement, partly because <laughs> we are a small program and therefore we cannot claim covering all the subjects that might come under our purview. So our students usually not only engage with faculty from other SMARCS units or actually from the department, but also faculty all across the Institute and sometimes even faculty from Harvard or even other universities in the Boston area. So actually the opportunities are limitless. Um, this is a program that I have to say that I have been sort of like part of for the last 30 years. It's a program that encourages creativity on the part of the student in designing their own program of study. And this doesn't apply only to ACPI, it applies to all the units that you've heard about students actually go out and design their program of study by selecting courses from their elective lists uh, and then designing their thesis. And as you get to the thesis level, you, you could actually bring in faculty from other places, from other countries in many instances. All you need to have is a supervisor from your own program and another faculty member from MIT the third faculty member that is a supervisor of your thesis could be anyone that is relevant to your work and that has the credentials. Mm -hmm. And to further that, there's a question there um, from uh, Shirley. How do students identify their thesis interests? Um, they, um, it is a, a program of, of um, uh, student-driven study. So it's important to kind of have the intellectual courage mm -hmm. to try new yeah. things um, and to design your own course. So other this is a big differentiator, so I'll, I'll just pause here for a minute. Um, other other um, second degree uh, professional programs in other schools plug you into a course of studies where you'll um, take a bunch of required studios and you'll, you'll, you'll be plugged in and then you'll pop out at the end. Um, hopefully a more polished rounded stone. Um, but at MIT, it's quite different. You're really charting um, your own course of studies and there are professors there to help you. You have an academic advisor who will work closely with you to help introduce you to other professors and um, help you kind of foster your interests and coalesce them into uh, a thesis uh, question and mm -hmm. project. And there is also um, your program director who can help you with that. Yeah. Sheila, let me answer the uh, urbanism question before I have to kind of uh, log out. Do. Mm -hmm. Uh, the question relates to, is the urbanism track focused uh, on just cities, or built environments, or built environments, uh, and exploring solutions and answering questions? So in fact, we, we are at, at this point questioning what, what is a definition of a city, and we're moving away from conventional notions of that towards what we call forms of urbanity, which can exist on various scales and in various environments. So absolutely landscape. Regional, we can't talk about environmental issues without looking at the region at the larger scale. So that's um, to answer that question. But the city as we know it is being questioned. Um, I, I just uh, add uh, kind of the second Sheila's point about the independence um, or the kind of how throughout the two years of the program, you imagine that you gradually kind of find or work towards a thesis uh, kind of to to collect your various interests with the support of faculty uh, uh, and kind of to guide you through how, how research could happen in, in the broadest kind of way. So it really is a much more independent uh, track, but, but an independent one that gradually you kind of gain more confidence in, mm -hmm. kind of, especially in the urbanism as you start with the studios and you kind of second year is completely devoted to thesis. 
Mm -hmm. um, there's a question here about um, uh, the depth of research and how one applies the materials that one needs to apply to a SMARCS program. Um, that will vary. Um, and I might ask my colleagues to address that question. Um, I can just say very briefly that in architecture and design, one would expect the portfolio to, to, to demonstrate excellence in that area. Um, we would expect you know, to see a fair number of design studios represented in your portfolio and, and it, that you've loved and that you've done you know, well in. Um, and then we would like to see some, um, the, the way in which you organize your work towards a future trajectory. You don't already need to have done the research, but you need to show that you're pointed in a direction and that this is not a kind of a casual, a notional idea to just like, hey, apply to MIT um, and you know, see what happens, that you really have an interest and that's, um, that's demonstrated in how you curate your work and how you write about it. Christoph, I, Sheila, before you leave, yeah. Oh. Sheila, I would like to address two questions. I mean, if Christoph has something, go ahead, but there are two questions that I would like to address. Uh, maybe uh, maybe we should all quickly because I think that's a burning question for a lot of uh, yeah let's let's go around and then we'll get to back present to this. and then we can back to that uh, it's a great question and this is where the differences between the programs come really to the forefront I would definitely recommend you contacting faculty in building technology with whom you'd like to work and part of the application uh, for the SMARCS PT program is on the one hand to show that you have design aptitude and on the other hand, kind of echoing what Sheila had said earlier, some demonstration that you're interested in building technology that you've maybe integrated them in, the, in your studio before, have done some experiences and work, and then that you are, um, the statement should demonstrate how you can project yourself, what you would be doing with us. It's not so important to have a detailed research program out there because in building technology, we strive to have all of our students being fully funded which usually means that the funding comes from externally funded projects. So there's usually a matchmaking exercise going on. And for that, uh, again, you should, I can just recommend you, if you're interested in BT, attend the open house on Wednesday because they're all faculty in BT will be presenting for a few minutes about their work and then you might um, see where you would fit in best. Um, should I go ahead, Sheila? Please do. Thank you, Nasser. Okay, so actually, Madison and Tejas, the questions, again, the same question about what is it uh, that we expect of an application specifically for HCC and ACPIA? Do we have to come with a finalized research project? No, you do not. Actually, what you need to come up with is some sort of a of a, a, a vision of where you want to go with what you have done so far and how does that fit within the uh, program and the program is of course history theory and criticism the same applies for um, ACPIA we focus very much on the history theory and criticism uh, face of things but no you do not have to have a a research program that is detailed this is basically what is hoped for during your stay at MIT is what you will develop, but it will just need to have a coherent vision of how you came to the point that you are in and why are you interested in applying to the program. Skylar or Rafi, would you like to add anything? Yeah, like, can I just, just very yes, quickly add course. to what Nasser had said? I would also just point out that for ACPIA and HTC applications, the portfolio, yes, is important and we review it, but far more important in some to some degree is your writing sample, right? Where we get a sense of who you are as a thinker, the kinds of research questions you're interested in and um, the way that you pursue them. So if you're applying to HTC and ACPIA, please make sure to submit your best work, right? Your best written work as well. Yeah, I can, I can say a few words on the application to the SMARCS Urbanism Program. Portfolio is definitely important to show some, um, some, some work on the urban scale, but also to be very clear on what your part in that work was. As we see in many of the urban projects, it's a collaborative effort and that's fine and we understand that, but we also need to see your own individual input. Uh, in terms of the research statement or, or interest statement, here, like in the other programs, there's not an expectation that that's all figured out and you've kind of already done the research, but it's more of 
what interests you on the urban scale in relation to research and design? And how, how do you enter that uh, kind of broadly? So uh, more, more a general kind of in statement of interest and directions rather than any proven kind of work that you've been doing. Uh, Rafi, there's one more question uh, there on the urbanism track. Mm -hmm. um, it says, apart from the question is uh, about the uh, focus uh, at the urban scale, would an individual with a focus to address concerns of the rural landscape uh, benefit from this program? Are we exclusively uh, urban? And to what extent do we deal with villages and rural landscapes? Right. So it's, um, we, we don't have a landscape program at MIT, but we do have landscape architects teaching in the urbanism program like Miho, for example, who works on the Urban Risk Lab, a lot of the issues, uh, who works, uh, yeah, a lot of her, the issues she, her research deals with address uh, landscapes. Uh, and th then we have other faculty also with a landscape background. So in a way, this goes back to a form of that we see, or what we call rural urbanism that we've been working on through the Center of Advanced Urbanism, is ideas of different forms of urbanity some of them involving the rural landscape. Any further questions to the urban program, please feel free to reach out to me or Miho or Rania, part of the kind of the urbanism uh, the faculty. Uh, I, I need to, to jump off to the Thank you, thesis yes. <laughs> uh, reviews, but uh, great to see everyone. And I hope to hear from many of you. Thank you. Uh, there is a question about writing samples. Um, they are, are required, uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, right, uh, both in yeah. urbanism and in architecture and design. Right. So there's your statement and there's a, a sample about your writing. Yeah. Uh, we do for foreign students at MIT, the Institute, it's not our department, but the Institute globally um, asks that students uh, meet uh, English language tests, um, IES or the TOEFL. Um, there are no GREs that are required, um, but the, uh, every international student who is not a native English speaker um, will also take an uh, English language assessment um, before they register at MIT once they're admitted. And um, that's again, independent from our department, um, it is done by the Institute. And if the Institute feels like the student would benefit, there is a uh, course in writing um, and also in research in English. Um, that they can take um, to help support that. Thank you, Rafi. Bye, Sheila, thanks. Yeah, Crystal, before you leave, is there anything that you would like to add about HTC or do you think it's covered? Um, um, I, I would just add um, to please reach out to any of the HTC faculty. You know, if you'd like to hear more about our work and more about their program, please don't be shy. Kathleen, who's here helping us today, is our magnificent administrative uh, guru. <laughs> she can also help set up appointments with um, individual faculty members if you'd like more um, information and a longer discussion. Yes, uh, the, this is, we are not the media lab and so we don't use the media labs uh, um, guidelines. So there is a language requirement for the SMARTS programs uh, that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Christelle. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, other questions. Um, uh, a BA in architectural studies. Um, that is a, that would be an MARC one um, application. And you know, it's really interesting because let me, as, as the um, architecture and um, design uh, program track director, I would say that this year's uh, cohort is pretty typical. We have two students who have worked for some period of time um, after their undergraduate studies and who are, are more mature and who have had a chance to um, engage in different sort of on the ground experiences. And then we have um, two students who have come from their undergraduate um, uh, bachelor, uh, professional degrees in architecture directly to MIT. So it's about 50-50, um, I would say. Uh, so it's not a given that one would immediately follow from an undergraduate to a SMARCS degree program, just because a person might ha not have had enough chance to really discover their interests or have had the opportunity through work 
um, or di different kinds of projects to engage in those interests in a way that you know they feel like this is it now. So, so think about that when you're applying as well. Let me add a point about HCC and ACPIA for that question about the, B, uh, the BA. Um, since we also supervise thesis on the history of art and not just of architecture, then people who are applying specifically for the lines of ACPIA and uh, HTC don't need to be professional architects or people who have a background in architecture, because we do take people who have done any humanities, given our humanities orientation, and who are interested in pursuing something in the history of architecture or the history of art. So that, that uh, restriction doesn't apply for these two lines of investigation. And uh, I would like to also say that for any of you who has any question about the Aga Khan program, please get in touch with Jose Luis, who hopefully would send you the email that you could basically ask if you uh, to meet with me or with Jose Luis, who is not just our guru, he's basically our program. And uh, uh, you could uh, schedule a meeting if you have any specific question to me or to Jose Luis about the program. Thank you, Nasser. Uh, just one question about the size. The size varies in the different SMARCs uh, programs um, from quite small, say four people or even two people, to maybe 12 or 14 um, or so. Uh, then they are all grouped together in the colloquium that Skylar teaches. Um, Skylar, we haven't talked about that. Do you want to touch on that? Sure. The SMARCs colloquium is a class that all SMARC students across each of the discipline groups take together their first semester at MIT. Um, and it's designed really to introduce you to each other and introduce you to the different research topics across the disciplines. Um, so the first two weeks, all the first years present to each other, their background, their interests coming to MIT, and the remainder of the semester, second year SMARCs and PhDs present to the first years. And we have a faculty member join each week from the different discipline groups to talk about what are the thesis topics that are emerging and to give feedback to the second years. Um, so that's one class, I think maybe the only class that all SMARCs take the very first semester at MIT. Um, I want to touch on a question back in the chain a little bit about our how we're how we're faring with COVID. Um, we are MIT has made a big push over the summer to open its campus, and we have a very robust um, testing program um, where anyone who comes onto campus is tested at least once a week and sometimes multiple times a week. And that's a very um, kind of streamlined process. We've converted the, uh, the uh, ice, ice hockey rink into a giant uh, COVID testing center, and it's, it's pretty quick to go through there. Um, so one takes a test. Um, one gets results on, on your cell phone um, through the MIT network text, and then you're eligible to do your attestation um, about our code of behavior, mask wearing, social distancing, everything you would expect, and then students can be on campus. So currently, uh, students are on campus um, in three hour uh, at a time blocks. Uh, that may be expanded, uh, but we've held uh, reviews outside recently. Um, we've had students gather both uh, socially and socially distantly, um, and also for uh, academic work um, inside uh, our buildings. So um, I do not know what the future holds, um, but hopefully the situation will start to get better. And uh, we anticipate that the hybrid model will be uh, adopted as well this coming spring semester. And, um, with, with, uh, with, and, and we're hopeful uh, that as we proceed into June and July, we'll be able to fully open the campus and be much more like normal in fall 2021. Having said that, let me caution everyone that these are, these are unknown conditions and they're quite dynamic. So please just stay, um, check in to uh, MIT and the department's website for any updates um, related to COVID. Are there any other questions that people would like to throw out? Good then. I would also like to um, extend an offer 
um, for students who are interested in the architecture and design program um, to contact either myself or really any, any of my colleagues um, in, in the architecture department um, who work with SMART students. Um, and um, uh, we, we'd be happy to um, speak with you or answer your questions. Um, I want to just conclude uh, talking a little bit about our admissions process, which is quite thorough. Um, we have typically a group of professors um, who represent different interests in the domain area, in the research area, who look at each candidate very carefully. We look at um, your writing and your academic record, and we also look at your portfolio if that's relevant or your writing samples. Um, and there are a series of discussions really in depth about the candidates. So it's a, it's a very hands-on and kind of careful process. And I think it's, um, I, I've taught at a number of, of uh, other, other schools around the country before I came to MIT. And I think it's really quite, um, a, quite a careful considered uh, process. Um, so one question, which I think is important for us to ask and answer is the question when choosing between an MARC and a SMARCS degree, what draws students to SMARCS? Well, first of all, they will have had a prior professional architectural degree. If you haven't had that degree, by definition, you're going into a first master's program and not a second master's program. So that's just really important to remember. Um, and so uh, someone would go to the MARC pro program because they're going to get their first master's of architecture. They have not had an accredited professional degree before, so this is their first degree. They're going to want to understand everything about architecture and have a chance to practice um, in studios, option studios, and in MIT's MARC 1 core program. SMARC students, on the other hand, have prior professional background in their area of study. And they come into the program because they already have a pretty good idea of their uh, research focus, where their interests are. And they want the liberty of a program that's quite free of studio requirements to construct their own curriculum, to really design their own curriculum. Um, they want that freedom and they want everything that MIT can offer, not only in our department in school, but across the whole institute where SMARC students are eligible to, um, to apply. You can, if you're a SMARC student, take a studio. Uh, you can even cross register with the GSD, but uh, taking a studio is rare because SMARC students, at least in architecture and design, um, and in urbanism will have had so much studio already that they've sort of had their fill of that, right? And now they want to kind of articulate um, their own kinds of projects and really experiment and test and, and push those boundaries. So those would be the differenti uh, differentiating factors. Yes, Schuyler has articulated it well. Good. And then I think we're almost at the end of our of our uh, session here. Uh, it was great to see um, the questions, very good questions, and a really nice um, participation. I know everyone's really busy, and that we may be catching you during odd times of your time zone or day or evening. Um, so we're really looking forward to see your applications to the SMARCS programs at MIT, if you think that's the right fit for you. And please do um, reach out and contact us um, in the specific programs. Um, a question, are students at MIT able to take courses from the GSD? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. All right, then I think we'll close it. Um, so hope to see you soon uh, at an open house for admitted students. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Nasser, Skylar, thank you. <laughs>